everyone welcome to today's edition of one single story where each weekday we tackle a single relevant question based on our bible reading for that day this week our reading is centered around the book of first john and today i'm joined by chris rexford and jay rivenbark and we have some supplemental reading during the week and the supplemental passage for today was psalm 36 And he says, sin whispers to the wicked deep within their hearts. They have no fear of God at all. In their blind conceit, they cannot see how wicked they really are. Everything they say is crooked and deceitful. They refuse to act wisely or do good. They lie awake at night, hatching sinful plots. Their actions are never good. But he he says that Sin blinds us. There's this blind conceit that comes with it. And you cannot see how wicked you really are. We talk about sin blinding us. It's in a famous song, I once was blind, but now I see. But how does sin blind us? What does that remind us? how, How does... How can we help people understand the things maybe that it blinds us of? I would say sin itself presents itself in a way that it's giving you what you want uh, for that period of time, but oftentimes it's it's riddled with some form of like cancer, and that that's just going to eat away at some part of your life. And I think part of it too is that we can convince ourselves that we can handle it, that we can juggle it, and following God and not letting it get too far out of control. And that's like a lot of times I've taught my boys that when they're making decisions to choose wisely to consider themselves almost like a a manager outside of their body, looking in and asking, is this wise? Is this something that you would that you should do? Mm-hmm. And if not, then you need to go ask your parents. <laughs> <laughs> do they? Now, yeah. Okay. I can't say in their teenage years. But they do now. Well, Scripture uh, tells us many places, and, and Jesus even described himself as the light of the world. Uh, light is, is the opposite of blindness in that there's clarity, there's illumination, there's there's insight. And so as it relates to seeing, I, I would describe it as <clears throat> an absence of the light of truth, which is Jesus. But some of the things that we do that contribute to that, and he talks about these are there's several of them here he said sin whispers to the wicked and uh one of the ways that we become blinded i'm convinced is by the influence of who and what we listen to that speaks into our lives whether it is directly or indirectly that it influences us and um i i get the word picture of horses that have blinders that you know it's not that they can't see anything but they're restricted in what they see and the more influence we have from the world rather than the the truth of scripture and what christ provides to us the more the blinders go on that that we only see in this narrow focus which usually is about us and you know and he, he talks about those things we we lose fear of god um the things that we say are crooked and deceitful Um, even lying awake at night hatching sinful plots that we can reach a place where we're so blinded or blinders or so restricted and narrowed that 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 becomes who we are. It clearly defines us, and we only go in that one direction um, without being able to see what what is obvious to everybody else. You know, it's one of the frustrating things about um, being in, in church work. People that are in difficult situations and seasons and times and you're like, are you are you stupid? Are you blind? Well, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. They are blind. They, their blinders don't allow them to see what's right beside them, the options that they may have. And uh, it's just a vicious cycle that I convinced that it just becomes worse and worse and worse and worse. And they don't want help. Mm-hmm. They want relief. Yeah, absolutely. They want relief and rescue. Yeah, and there's yeah. a difference. Completely. Yeah, yeah, a complete difference. Mm-hmm. There's so many ways, so many things that affect our vision. You know, you can be you can be able to see fine and have great periphery vision, but if you're in a fog mm-hmm. or rain, um, even sun, yeah, you know, even light, you know, it can distort your keep vision. you from being able to see. I had a friend who 
when we were in high school, he had, if he hadn't had this car, I'm convinced he would be dead. But he had, um, it was, it was um, a Buick Riviera. Had the long nose on the front mm. of it. And it was an old one, a big long nose. And he was coming along and the sun was shining right in his eyes. And there was a motor grader in front of him. And he never hit the brakes. He mm. hit that motor grader just doing 45, 50 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And it crumpled that thing up. And he walked away from it. But the sun blinded mm -hmm. him. You know, there are there are things that it, it's not just it's not just there are situ situational yes. that can keep us uh, from being able to see. And um, every situation is different. You know, I, I think we recognize the dangers of rain and, and how it affects our sight, you know, and, and, and where rain is concerned. So like, the hardest time for my wife to drive is at night when it's raining, mm -hmm. you know, Same here. so it's dark and raining, mm -hmm. you know, it, it affects your, your ability to judge, mm -hmm. you know? And so if you're constantly putting yourself in environments that have external pressures on your ability to see clearly, then you're going to make a lot of wrong choices. Yeah. You know, it, it could, it can, and, and some of those external pressures are habits that you have, people you hang around with, the inputs into your mind, what you read, listen to, uh, you know, um, the environments that you find yourself in, uh, because um, there, there are times when I'm driving, I can see fine, I don't normally struggle driving unless I get distracted, mostly by a phone, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, my wife would have to say, Stephen, you know. <laughs> now, if I was in the car with somebody who slept all the time, right, or didn't care, or it, I could get my own self in trouble because I was with the wrong person. But when I'm, if I'm with somebody who is, more alert in a situation than I am or paying attention when I'm not, I can keep me from, you know, make, making mistakes. And I think that all of those things play a factor in um, why we can't see. You know, I, I think we tritely say, I was blind, but now I see. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we think about the things that blind us. Even after we yeah. You know, even after the scales come off our eyes, we we still put ourselves in situations that keep us from being able to see. And we have to be careful that we put ourselves in environments that we can see. Mm -hmm. Now, my greatest, I, I wrote this story in my book. I probably told this on a podcast. I don't know. But my greatest, that I laugh about it every time I think about it. There was a guy who tended my church, my first church. He had macular degeneration, and he couldn't see anything but white. That was all he could see, and only in his periphery. Mm -hmm. Like, he he would ride a bicycle, and if you ever saw him on, you probably knew Charles. Mm -hmm. If you ever saw him riding a bicycle, he was riding like this because he could see the white line. He'd mm -hmm. ride along that white line. If they want a white line, he was in trouble. We had We put a church sign up there and um you had to dig a, a hole four by eight and six feet deep mm. for footers and he said brother mazel that's what he called me brother mazel he said if you mark it with flour i'll come out there and dig it mm. and i went out there with flour and marked where it was going to be that cat dug that hole wow. in an hour or two with a <laughs> shovel wow. i mean he was strong as ox yeah but this was after okay he, had, he used to be a preacher and um, backslid, was living in sin, hadn't been to church. And I don't know, six months after I'd been to church, we had a revival. And he he came in to the revival. And then he came back another night. And the second night, um, the evangelist gave an altar call and he made his way down to the front and 
crying, you know, and, you know, repenting, getting his life right. And the evangelist um, got down there with him and was going to, was you know, what do you need? And he told him what he needed. And he, the evangelist took his Bible and opened it up in front of him. He said, you see, it's right here. <laughs> and I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> he needed a white letter edition. Yeah, that's right. You forget Can't that. You put that in dark mode. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. Anyway, fortunately, the evangelist, after a second or two, read it. You know, the Bible mm. says. You know. Anyway, the service was over. We went back. The house was, we were, we were living in a single wide trailer at the time, right beside the church. And the evangelist and his wife came over. And I said, I just got to tell you, that guy tonight, you were trying to get him, because I was standing in the back about to die laughing. I said, that guy, you tried to get to read the Bible. <laughs> I said, he he's blind. Hmm. And in good evangelist spiritual fashion, he said, <laughs> I know he was blind. He said, but praise God, now he can see. I said, no, nope, no, he can't. Don't I said, he's blind as a cave bat. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and we got a big chuckle out of it. And um, But I think sometimes that we make it just that trite. I w you know, yesterday we talked about, I think it was yesterday or the day before, can we live a sinless life? My belief is we can but I don't believe when we get saved that we can be unaware of how sin blinds us or how other things, yeah. you, you talked about the systems a couple of days ago this, when we were talking about loving the world, how the systems of this world deceive us and blind us to huh. the truth and cause us to either sin or accept sin. You know, there are churches right now in, are under immense pressure culturally over a couple of issues. And if we're not careful, we will allow them to blind us mm -hmm. to the truth of God's word and doing what is right and standing firm on what yeah. what the church, what God believe, would have us to do. Okay. And so when... Blind to seeing is not just a sin to salvation yeah. issue. It's something we've always got to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Else we find ourselves in situations that we're not seeing clearly and making yeah. choices. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us Monday as we start a conversation around the book of Second John.